Every year, I like to make a video on Pokemon sprites in main series Pokemon games. We started with Gen 1, went to Gen 2, went back to Gen 1 since I excluded some games on the first list, and then went in order of other generations and remakes. But we have finally reached the last main series game to use 2D sprites over 3D models, Pokemon Black and White. And Black 2 and White 2 by extension, but those games use the same sprites as Black and White, so this video will encompass all the Generation 5 sprites as a whole. Black and White was the peak of Pokemon sprite work, sending them out in style. The sprites were fully animated throughout all the battles, showing a lot of personality with each Pokemon. While I do like to cover the weirdest sprites, when we have nothing to question, we'll simply look at the coolest, and there's definitely nothing weird about the Black and White sprites. They all look great! So we'll be covering the 10 best sprites that we feel had the most personality of the bunch. We'll just be looking at the Gen 5 Pokemon, since most of the Gen 1 through 4 Pokemon had the same or very similar sprites as they did in the Gen 4 games, just with full motion. And joining me for this video is the Pokemon Master herself, Judgment Meter. Yes! Me! Me! Now, let's analyze the top 10 Pokemon sprites in black and white. Number 10, Jellicent. This one has a pretty minor detail that I like, but I think it's unique. Their eyes bounce at a slightly different rhythm as their body when it bounces. They could have just had the face stationary as Jellicent bounces, but they added that extra little detail. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but I like how it looks like Jellicent is surveying their opponent, like, ah, oh, yeah. Yes, I like the cut of your jib, kid. But really, Jellicent's appearance is great in all forms, looking extremely royal. I think the boy looks like the Monopoly man with a crown. He's the Monopoly man! And the lady looks like... Uh, I don't have a specific comparison for her. Can I just say she looks like a queen? A queen who also has a flotation device. She's afraid of drowning. It's always better to be safe than sorry. But she knows how to swim. She's a water Pokemon. She wants to be extra sure that she's not gonna drown. I guess she's just happy to see us. She is always happy to see you. It's also because she's going, oh my God. Looks like she has a heart mouth. That being said, they may only be happy to see us because they allegedly feed on life energy. And last I checked, we are alive. Technically though, it's just rumors that they drag people in according to one of the Pokedex entries. So we don't have any confirmed kills by them, right? That's nice. Better than the alternative. Number 9, Solosis. Really, Solosis' whole evolutionary line has a lot going on in the sprite department. It's just a weird Pokemon to begin with that seems Seeing them in motion just bolsters how strange they truly are. No disrespect though, I've always thought transparent bodies are cool, like with Reuniclus, seeing all the innards that power its gooey body. He's like the transparent Game Boy Color, and that's the one I had, so that probably explains why I like this Pokemon line so much. He kind of looks like he's a dude and a robot, and he's also like throwing out the peace signs, which is pretty cool. But what the hell is he? Not really sure. They're just indescript beings with two brains whose bodies multiply like cells in mitosis. They're basically the Pokemon representation of mitosis. The rest of them don't really need another explanation. Oh, dropping out some science. What? Science! But as much as I like the design of Reuniclus, Solosis has a few quirks to his animation that make his sprite the most interesting of the family to me. Well, really just one aspect of the sprite. I like that the goo bounces as he floats there. But there's a specific way it moves. It jiggles as if he's pushing up against it internally, as if he's struggling to escape. Is this body just a gooey prison for him? Anyone else see this? Look at how it pulses. Does this Pokemon just live constantly? trying to escape its body? Living's hard, man. He's just struggling to stay alive. Though, to play devil's advocate, maybe it's the other way around, where the goo holds him back from using his true power, and it's actually trying to escape where it could destroy society as we know it with its full strength. Look at him just floating there, menacingly. Menacingly? I think he's just trying to stay awake. Hey, humor me here. Make him actually sound like a threat. Let me out! 
out. Why is he that full of rage? Would you like to be stuck in a ball of cytoplasm? Huh, I guess I wouldn't. At least it's bouncy. That's fun. Number eight, Chinchino. Chinchino gets its money's worth from these 54 frames of animation. It's fur that it turns into a scarf flow in the wind as if it's doing a fancy photo shoot. I'm not even sure if there's even wind around it to blow the scarf, or if it just wills the wind into existence to look elegant. Either way, the sheer bounce of that scarf is giving Melanie a run for her money in the outfit department. Oh my god, it's like Sashomaru's scarf that he gave to Setsuna. She's doing like a sexy scarf dance in the back. <laughs> She's got some moves, man. I also like when it gives a little kick, which makes it look like it's trying to do some sort of posh hair flip. She's so cute! Look at that! She's very cute! Besides all the fashion, Chinchino is also known for having shiny fur, so Pokemon really needs to sign an advertising deal with L'Oreal already. If there's any Pokemon that should be telling us that we're worth it, Chinchino's the one. Number 7, Cofagrigus. The menacing grabby hands of this Pokemon are funny to see in motion, but what I like the most about Cofagrigus' sprite is that it reflects its Pokedex entries, which essentially state they pretend to be elaborate coffins to teach lessons to grave robbers. It has been said that they swallow those who get too close and turn them into mummies. During its animation, he'll occasionally retreat into his sarcophagus-like shell to look like the real thing, which is showing how he tricks those ignorant thieves. I like how he has to set up this trick. First, he retracts the top part of his head, and then his hands go inside of him as his face closes up. That's a clean animation. The question is, why does he do this mid-battle? I assume it's because he has the ability Mummy, which nullifies the opposing Pokemon's ability if they touch him, basically fulfilling his own Pokedex entry. A clever visual. But Cofagrigus will keep on doing this coffin fake out regardless of if he's been touched or not. Unless, is he constantly pretending to be a sarcophagus not for the sake of the opposing Pokemon, but rather because he's hoping his own trainer will finally fall for this trick? Is he thinking they'll just forget what they're doing to say, neat, a sarcophagus, and then boom, mummification. Is he one of those Pokemon that's actively trying to kill his own trainer? This feels like a Shedinja scenario with its soul absorbing back. With a face like Cofagrigus's, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Number six, Electros. This guy is energized. Look at his fancy footwork. He's either practicing his DDR moves or throwing a tantrum. Though what makes seeing him use his feet so vigorously seem kind of weird is this is the only game where he's actually standing. All other games show him floating, which makes sense since he has the ability levitate, but it's kind of jarring to see him standing upright in one game and then going into full flotation mode in all other games, especially since he has some moves. This guy's busting a groove and he gives that all up to float there indefinitely. Look at that movement. After he does the left foot right foot dance, he then just starts stomping around as if he's going dance with me Lois, dance the dance of life. He's kind of like a sumo wrestler. He goes do do do. He's going dokusu. As an added bonus, when he's done with his little dance, he flashes the lights on his body for a bit to remind us that he's a pure electric type. It's like he built up so much energy when jumping around that he needed to expel it in the form of electricity. Oh, he's like a nightlight. Finally, even though his mouth is just a giant O, the angle of his head in this sprite makes it look like he's giving us a little grin with his teeth sticking out instead. To this day, I still can't unsee that image, and it brings this whole sprite together, making it look like he's happily dancing and blinking his lights just because he loves battling. Number 5, Garbodor. I've always been a fan of Garbodor. I feel like he's hated on for the wrong reasons. He's just a parallel of wheezing and muck. Wheezing is air pollution, muck is water pollution, and Garbodor is land pollution. He was the missing piece, even though he's bad for the environment. I went into him more on my awkward Pokemon list, but to summarize, I think it's funny that he starts as a neatly tied garbage bag, and evolves into a giant garbage pile broken out of the much smaller bag, since that's everyone's greatest fear when they wait to take out the trash and let it overfill the garbage can until it's too late. I respect Garbodor for taking out the trash on his own. I wouldn't hug him since, you know, that's unsafe.
sanitary, but I'd at least pat him on the head with a glove on. How can you not love him? I like the Gigantamax one. That's my favorite. Yeah, but that's three generations ahead of where we are now. But look, he has crap in him, just like in a Katamari. He just accumulates crap, just like a Clefairy and a ship wind-up toy and an airplane. It's adorable. I love this one. Oh, he has Legos too. Who doesn't want to play with him? I want to play with him. He's also high. That's very nice and helps out our Garbodor praise, but what about the black and white sprites? I like the baby and the giant one. What I like about his Gen 5 sprite is he's extending his hand out as if he's going, hello friend. I also like watching his mouth move. The Trubbish line always had a cool spiky mouth, but Trubbish never moved it in his Gen 5 sprite. Garbodor, on the other hand, moves that mouth all day. I like the chomps. I can't explain it, but it's just fun to watch him go, eh, eh, eh. Number four, Vanillux. Vanillux's evolutionary line was another group of Pokemon that got a lot of hate, but eh, I think there were some clever design choices. It's not ice cream, but rather an icicle monster that got covered in snow and just so happens to look like soft serve. Not my favorite design, but I like the explanation. My favorite thing about this sprite is the straw. What's its purpose? How did it get there? What organ of Vanillux is this? It's smoking a joint. No, I'm pretty sure that's just a part of its body, or at least something it needs to survive. Every so often, it releases cold air out of the straw, as if it's exhaling. And it's not just the fact that it looks like it's breathing, but it aggressively shakes whenever the cold air comes out of it, as if it's painful, or at least uses a lot of energy. It looks like it's aerating, like a fine wine. Maybe it's like a tailpipe on a car, and this is just how it expels waste from its body. I also like how each side takes turns waving their little nubs as if they were hands. It's like they're celebrities waving to the fans. The only issue is neither face moves. They're just stuck with that one expression as they say hello and release exhaust. I like the one on the left. He looks like he had too much sugar and now is a bit too happy. No, he's fine. He's completely conscious and moving his only movable appendage. Don't worry about him. Just don't stare. Look at the other guy. He's happy having a good time. Number three, Crustle. What I like about this Crustle sprite is he's actively threatening us in it. It's a bit hard to tell because he moves so slowly, but it's there when you look closely. When he's doing his idle stance, he'll occasionally lift his right claw and shake it, followed by him lifting his left claw and shaking it. It's like he's saying, hey, you want a piece of me, kid? I'll annihilate you with my claws, these claws. He can also back up this tough persona because he bears the weight of the world on his back, in the form of that giant rock, which he shakes a bit as he moves. If he can carry that thing around all day, I'll take any of his claw threats to heart. Really? Because that's the exact opposite of what I was thinking? He's clearly struggling to get out from under it, and hoping it doesn't crush him. How's that not dead yet? Because he's invincible, or it's the shell armor. Well, don't they all have shell armor because they have shells? Well, technically yes, but it's just the name of one of his abilities, and it was supposed to be wordplay, and you know, does he even need the shell to show his strength? Well, it protects their gooey insides. Okay, yes, but the fact that he's tamed this rock and is able to flawlessly move his claws under its intense weight shows how much of a badass Crustle is, right? No, I think the rock's trying to kill it. It's trying to make a meal out of it for somebody. Apparently, I'm the only one on Team Crustle here. Save me. One more pebble and I'm done for. Number two, Cub Chew. Cub Chew came into this battle with personality, always having that single drop of snot present because he can't contain all of his ice powers into his tiny body. And with that sprite, Cub Chew puts us on the edge of our seats with that hanging snot that could fall at any time, and watching him sway around back and forth just exacerbates the situation. You're gonna loosen it, dude! And you know he's gonna eat it next. Actually, no, he does the opposite. He tries to suck it back in as if it was never there to begin with, because he realizes, hey, I don't have a tissue and this snot is gonna make a mess. Better avoid that. However, the snot is too large for him to handle because he's just a tiny guy, and it flops back out of his nose, creating a vicious cycle of it almost dripping on the floor as it hangs there. Ew, he's so happy, he's just kicking his little feet. <laughs> the way he happily kicks his feet after sucking it back up makes me think he's aware of the mess that he didn't make and he's proud of himself now. I also like how he fakes this out right before sucking it up, where the drip elongates for a second, like, oh, 
Oh, I'm gonna fall. <laughs> Just kidding. I got this under control. Oh, it's a disgusting little goober that I want to smush. Oh, it's so cute and disgusting at the same time. Just like a toddler. Now this is how you take advantage of being a fully animated sprite. Number one, Scraggy. Look at this guy's pants. They're much bigger than they need to be, and Scraggy seems to be quite aware, since he keeps pulling them up to their highest degree and then releases them, because that's a fun time. Sometimes watching gravity take effect is all you need. These pants might be too big, but they're my only pair, and I'm gonna rock the crap out of them. Are they attached to his body? So the fun thing about Scraggy is, that is all a skin. It just so happens to look like parachute pants, and him constantly pulling them up is not just for fun, it's a battle tactic. The loose skin is so elastic that it can act as a cushion against incoming attacks, so Scraggy is actually preparing for an onslaught. He never knows when his opponent is going to surprise him with a mock punch or something, so he's boosting his defenses regularly. I feel like it's got a chafe. It's freaking me out. No, that's just his under layer of skin. He's in the middle of stretching it out and molting, creating his fun imitation pants. Well, keep molting. Finish molting already. Come on, you'll learn to love it. Look, it's a different color than his outer skin. I think he's doing something wrong. The loose skin even has a backstory, or when it's fully stretched, stretched out all over his body, he will evolve, and he's definitely giving it a jump start in this sprite. Then when he evolves into Scrafty, he still has a variation of the skin pants, showing that old habits die hard. Now he's a rocker check. So with the pants of justice that are a few sizes too big, Scraggy pulls his way up to the top of this list. Now what did you think? What are your favorite sprites from Gen 5, and what are your favorite Pokemon from it? And now that we've reached the end of the main series games with 2D sprites, what similar aspect of Pokemon should we cover next? Let us know in the comments! Anyway, thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next video!